Hi, Danita. Thank you for joining me. Hi. Listen, this has just been something I've been so excited about for the longest. Um, and how we met is so uncanny because I was leaving at the time I was in the Navy, getting out of the Navy. Um, I was still active duty, quote unquote, but I was in what they call um, terminal mode, meaning I was ending my contract. So when we ran into each other, it was actually during a noonday Bible class mm -hmm. at church. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's just like you looked at me, I looked at you and I guess our spirits clicked, I don't know. But yeah. you smiled, I smiled back and we hugged each other because I think Bishop was like, you know, greet someone or whatever. Yeah. And then at the, I think we kind of chatted a little bit yeah. and then we ended up following each other on Instagram. Yeah. And then we just became like sisters, like just yeah. like you just those people. Yeah, you just click. And I remember um, that night service, you know, now, you know, a lot of people don't do testimony service anymore. You know, we come from the generation you sing, you testify, testify, don't sing. But yeah. during <laughs> the night service, you got up and sang a piece of a song and you started singing. And I could, was like, she has it. Wow. It was like you could feel God when you open your mouth. I could feel God. And wow. I was like, she's a worshiper. I didn't know you then. This is before we talked. And then like, I think that Wednesday we met during the noonday. And then from there, I was like, that girl's a worshiper. And ever since then, just getting to know you, we started DM DMing each other and chatting. And I was like, this girl is so cool. I had no idea who you were, what you did. I just liked your spirit. I was drawn to your spirit. And then after I was like, I wonder if she'll get on my podcast. I'm going to ask her. She might tell me no, but I'm going to like ask her anyway. And then mm -hmm. I was like, Danita Gibbs, like I just, again, oblivious or whatever. And then I was like, oh my gosh, she is so dope. But by then I was cool with you and everything. So here we are. <laughs> yes. Yes, girl. So I just want to say thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Um, and then with that being said, we're going to kick off the show and go from there. So, hey, everybody, my name is Camille Essek. I'm the host of the Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast where innovators and creators connect. I pretty much created this platform as a space for entrepreneurs, creators, innovators, those that are just in the music industry or any type of creative vein. We all go through ups and downs in life. Social media always shows the highlights or the highs, but people have journeys, they have stories. And we look up to people and we wonder like, oh my gosh, they're so amazing, but you don't know what they what they went through to get to where they are. So I created space for individuals to just share and give nuggets and jewels about how they survive the storms of life. And just to give insight on, hey, it's tough right now, it's hard, but this is what I went through. This is my story, my journey and how I got through it. And if I can make it, you can make it too. And also for people to do so where they don't feel judged, like this is a safe environment for communication um, because all of our stories are different. We all don't have the same path. So if you're, you know, ever wonder like, what is her show about? That's what it's about. So if you're just new, new to um, joining me, thank you for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you wanna follow me, please do. I'm on Instagram at CamilleEssick.com. If you have a question, shoot me an email at info at CamilleEssick. And then I'll also give the information at the end of the show. So with that being said, um, worshiper, amazing uh, songstress, uh, Danita Gibbs, um, without all the accolades, to me, she's just a sweet person that I met at church and she's anointed and gifted. So Danita, thank you for coming to the show. I'm so glad to be on your show. Yes, and just a little bit more volume so we can hear you. Okay, I'm honored to be. Maybe I need to speak up some, huh? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I know you can get it out. You you got yeah. the pipes. <laughs> is that better? Yes, that's much better. Okay. So for those that are not familiar with you, let the viewers and listeners know who you are and like what got you into singing. What was your influence? And um, those that are not aware, um, the late great Rance Allen was your godfather. So just share a piece of that with us, um, just your journey. Okay, first I'm gonna tell you who I am. Yes. Um, it's Danita Gibbs. Um, I'm in the middle of seven children. My mom and dad has seven, ch seven children. And I was really, as a child growing up, I was really odd. I was one of the most oddest children. Um, between my brothers and sisters there was. I knew that God had called me out of like an early age I knew it was something different about me but I just 
I was like, God, why did you make me like this? Why am I like this? Like we would go down, they would go downstairs and they would watch TV, like a movie and stuff. And I was I, like, I was, I think if I was like about 13 years old and I was like, I don't want this to contaminate my spirit at 13. Really? I was saying this at 13. You were aware like of- I, I just know. knew it was something. And so I would go, I would go upstairs in my room like I'm telling you like a true story. I would go upstairs in my room and I would get on my knees and pray. And I was like, God, what is wrong with me? And I said, I want to be like my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And I was just sneak away a lot. Like after church, um, you know, like after my mom would cook and stuff, I would, I would go in my room and I would pray. I would, I would just get on my knees and pray. So I was like, man, what's, I said, God, just, this has got to be crazy. And anyway, at an early age, I knew that God had called me. I knew that I, I knew that I was different. Right. Yeah, I knew that I was different. And um, out of my seven brothers and sisters, wow. and then from then on, um, I started singing. Like I started getting up like at three and four o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and I would, I would go in the den and I would just sing, 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 sing. And then my mom would come. My mom would come in and say, "Be quiet, Danita. You're waking everybody up. I'm a bitch. Fine." <laughs> so um, it just started from there. Um, um, a great friend of mine named Tom Alexander, he recognized the anointing and the gift on my life, mm -hmm. and he just mentored me. And like I said, at that time I was really young, like 13, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. So he talked to my mom. He's like, "Hey, I want to come and get Danita, and I want to just..." I want to bring her to Mobile like every weekend. So my mom was like, okay. It's like, Danita, you can't go by yourself. You have to take your sister Nicole with you. So um, Nicole would go with me and he when, um, he would come and get me. And then he would just start mentoring me and taking me in the studio to sing and showing me different things about the ministry and um, so forth. And then um, he um, paid for me to do a live recording. He believed in me. How old were you at this time with the recording? I was like 17. And the and the 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 recording was so awful. It was like a it was like a garage thing, you know, like you, when you first get started. <laughs> yeah, when you first get started, you know, it's uh the, the you know, the garage. Um, we'll call it humble beginnings. Yes, the humble <laughs> beginning. So, um, <laughs> So, um, so that's, I mean, um, we did that, we did that thing and, and believe it or not, the CD went really well. Like it started, people start asking for it. And my name just start just traveling around Birmingham, Alabama. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Let me go back. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, okay. but I live in Nashville. Yes. Yes. And my name just started just, just traveling, doing a lot of things. And, um, God just really began to open so many doors. There was this man, another man that heard about me. He said, Denise, your name is just traveling around Birmingham. And I want to um, have a meeting with you. I had a meeting with him. Mm -hmm. Come to find out he recorded Ruben Stutter. He recorded Virtue Girls. He recorded Pastor Mike. Um, he recorded um, some of the biggest names in the industry, R&B and gospel. And he offered me a deal. I signed a deal with him. 2014, um, we did a CD. I was number 14 on the Billboard charts. And my name just started really getting out. God just started opening so many doors for me. So that's how it started. That's amazing. And mm -hmm. to have those experiences to young people that may be listening or parents that have, you know, young parents, teen parents, and they begin to notice that they may have something. How important is, is it for a parent or for parents to encourage the child or even protect the child's environment um as far as hanging with the right people wrong people and just being sensitive to see hey my child is gifted with art or they're really good at math or i know that they're in there i noticed they're inclined to this particular area how do you feel like having that eye is, is important and detrimental to your future um that's so important my mom and dad they really grown me and they were on me the hardest as um, out of all my brothers and sisters. And I would get mad. I was like, why are they on me so much? Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't wear certain things and I couldn't do the certain things because I didn't realize it then, but there was anointing on my life mm -hmm. and they covered me and they taught my mom, said Danita, she said, you, I can teach you how to love God, but you're going to have to learn how to love God for yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, she was, you know, she used to tell me about different, how to dress and how to, the main thing that she instilled in me was a relationship with the Lord. That was the main thing. 
that she instilled with me. And I, I just took that on. And I'm so glad that I have a relationship with the Lord. That's the most important thing that any of us can have. But that's what they really instilled in me. And that's what they in should instill in their children, whether it's playing sports or whether it's doing anything. Make sure that your connection with God is on point. And I think that the um, we as parents, we should teach our kids this. We should teach our kids that um, to pray. We just to teach, teach our kids to, hey, get in your word and read. If you have to read one scripture a day, start with that. So that's what my mom and dad, that's what they did with us. And I'm glad you said that, Danita, because it actually, um, that was a question coming, coming to my mind as far as even if you're an entrepreneur, you know, an artist, a mathematician, a ball player, whatever, the importance of incorporating spirituality. Um, I'm a part of the Mark Coley Business Academy, um, created by Mark Coley, and he's always talking about uh, coupling your relationship with God with whatever you do, because mm -hmm. in those areas, God can also give you the strategies for your brand, for your business, mm -hmm. and and even particularly what you do with music, you know, downloading those songs, getting those lyrics. So what is your take on um, coupling the and then you've already touched on it but just kind of emphasizing more the importance of that relationship and how it can actually help you move through business even in the music industry saying hmm, maybe I shouldn't sign that contract or maybe yeah. that's not the manager for me yes God will show you some things God will um open your open up your spirit of discernment like I didn't even know how to write when I um, went to the studio um they handed me a bunch of tracks it was like here, here just go home and write to them I said what I can't do that I was like, I don't know how to write. They said, Danita, you can do it. And I was so like, I was so like, uh, I was upset, but I was afraid. I was like, Lord, I don't know how to write. I said, I, I'm not a writer. I said, God, you're going to have to help me. So I took, girl, I took those tracks home. And when I tell you, as soon as I listened to them, the Lord just started flowing through me, like, just like that. I was writing each song, like five minutes, some of them like two minutes. Like I never forget, I went over to my mom's house one time during this time and I was sitting at the kitchen table and I was like, mom, I'm finna write this song. I wrote, I wrote the song in like three minutes. Mm. And, and, and because I can, my, 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 my ear was open mm -hmm. to the Lord and me and him had that connection. So it wasn't really hard for me to do anything because we had that connection. Mm -hmm. So he gave me line by line. He told me what to do, what to say, what scripture to put in it. Mm -hmm. So. And when you're getting those lyrics, um, maybe you get a topic, maybe it's about um, adversity or healing mm -hmm. and just pursuing those things. So in the journey of being an artist, um, you see a lot of times on social media, people, you know, as I said at the beginning of the episode, they post the highlights or the best part of their lives, but there's also a journey. Like you have to pay. Yes. Like we're here in the church. You got to pay for it. You know, you. Yes. what's the thing? Um, the salvation is free, but the anointing costs. We heard that all the time growing up in church. Yes. And so people don't realize like these songs, a lot of times they're birthed out of something you had to go through mm -hmm. or you're going through right now, mm -hmm. or maybe it's not for you but because someone else is in that situation and you're kind of like that, that vessel being, you know, channeling that message for the person. Um, I posted one of your videos I love so much. I was, I couldn't sleep last night and I was thinking about our episode for today and I was on Facebook, you know, going through stuff mm -hmm. and your video popped up and I, the song Hold On. Yes. And I was just like, wow, this song is so encouraging. It's so upbeat. And there were people that didn't even know you like around multicultural, you know, audience. I don't know what venue you were in, but how music can touch every demographic, every class, every race, every nationality, orientation, it doesn't matter, but music, it hits everybody. Mm -hmm. And so how do you feel knowing that this gift has been given to you and that you're steward over it and that what you say coming out of your mouth can change a life? It can literally prevent somebody from taking their life. It can encourage, it can uplift. Um, you know, we hear these um, songs that are like the soundtrack of our lives. You know, I have certain songs I remember, they're like soundtracks to me, like certain songs I hear, I think about when I was 13 or in high school or college. You know, oh, that was my jam, I remember that song. So how does that make you feel knowing you have this responsibility? Oh my God, that's uh, such a great question. And I want to start by saying in my life, I have went through so many things, so many things. Some were good and some were bad, but the Lord 
within the bad times, that's when the anointing was birthed on the inside of me. And at the time, I didn't understand why I was going through so much. I didn't understand. I didn't want to go through so much. And I used to be mad at God. And I'd be like, why, why, why are you taking me through this? You know, why, why do I have to keep going through stuff? But it was the anointing that destroys the yoke. And, you know, God has to trust you. You know, that's a question that, that um, we, we ask God often. God, can, I, can you trust me with the anointing? Because it's so precious. The anointing is so precious. It, it, it draws lives. It, it, you, have to, you, have to be, you have to be like tamed for the anointing. People, don't, people will never understand you. They will never understand the type of person you are. They won't understand you as a person. They will judge you because the anointing on your life. They will call you weird. They will call you crazy because of the anointing. And you have to be able to take, you have to be able to wear thick skin because you're gonna be um, criticized a lot. You're gonna be talked about a lot. You're gonna be called different a lot. Cause I was called different. I, I'm still, they still call me different now because, the, because they can't figure you out because of the anointing on your life. So um, the anointing is so thick, it's so precious. And I wanna highlight that out of the question you just asked me, I just wanna highlight the anointing because us as artists, a lot of, we, we have beautiful voices. We can get up and sing a, a house down. We can shout a house down. But one thing that's missing in this industry is the anointing, the pure, authentic anointing. Who is at the feet of Jesus? Whose soul is getting saved? Whose soul is getting touched when you open up your mouth? Because, I mean, it doesn't make any sense if I might as well go back home and do what I'm doing and watch a Netflix movie if I don't have the anointing. That's a very good point. Um, it made me think about where gospel music is now. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up, you know, old school. Mm -hmm. I, I look at myself more of a bridge. Like I grew up old school, but then in other areas of my life, I'm very pro progressive and more open-minded. Mm -hmm. But I've seen some changes that even for me, I'm like, maybe that's too much. Because, I, and, I, and I get it, people do things um, as far as, with their music to reach other demographics. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, quote unquote, trap gospel. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when Kirk Franklin came out with Stomp and that was like, whoa, you know, yeah. <laughs> I remember- He is going too far now. <laughs> yes, and that was, you know, I remember I was at home and this is so funny and so true. You know, when Stomp comes on, he's like, for those that think gospel music has gone too far. And my mom was in the bathroom doing her hair. She goes, yes, it has. <laughs> 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 too far, too much. <laughs> and, but it became an anthem for like the skate parties, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I love Kirk Franklin and his energy because, you know, it was so cool. And he made listening to gospel music cool. Yeah. And then, then here comes DJ Cat and it's like, whoa, who was yeah. that, you know? Yeah. And so you see all these different levels. And then there's some things out now, you have to actually listen to it because the beat, I'm like, is this gospel or is this yeah. future? Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we see changes in the church where, again, even the inside of the building looks kind of like a club, you know, with the dark lights and the yeah. smoke and it's like, are we in church or are we in the club? You know, and one, I, thing that, one thing that has challenged that yeah, um, because we don't have an audience and we don't have people to sing to mm -hmm. is really challenge your relationship with God. And that's what I was getting to, because now I'm like, where, where are, are there boundaries? And then my thing is like, I get it. We want things to be hip and cool and not always about tradition. Yeah. But where are the lines drawn? Because now we're at a crossroads, particularly with the pandemic of relationship, the institution of church, the building, and the intimacy. So mm -hmm. it's like, where is the state of, where are we now? Where yeah. are we right now? It's, you know what, we're actually, I know this might sound crazy, but we're in the best time that we should be. Mm -hmm. We can never criticize what God is doing. Some of us might say, man, I'm glad. And I have said, I was like, I'd be so glad when this pandemic is over. But you know what? Mm -hmm. I will never question what God is doing in this season. We should never question and we should say, thank you, Lord. Just like that song says, um, I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. 
but my good days, I weigh my bad days and I'll say, thank you, Lord. I say, thank you, Lord. And it's, I, I will stand on that. I want to say, thank you, Lord, because God is sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it at any time he wants to do it. We never saw this pandemic coming. We never saw us doing this virtually. We never saw any of this. Right. But you know what? God has a way of still getting this out. And I, I really believe in my heart that God is going to bring us out of this. And I think it's going to be a test for all of us. What did you do in this season when, you know, God is watching us and God is saying, what, what were you doing in this season, in this pandemic, when I had, when I had y'all sit down mm -hmm. on the computer and we, and you're talking to people, what did you do in this season? So I, I really think God is, he's judging and testing all of us. Yeah, I think about the message within, you look at culture of the church. Yeah. As far as how is it, how is it being transmitted mm -hmm. and tra translated to like my generation or even those mm -hmm. younger than me? Um, just because there's so many things being put out here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are like, well, you know, I want to feel good, you know, but it's not always about feeling good uh -huh. there's a conviction that comes with it and yeah. you know I've heard people say well I didn't like what he said so I'm going to leave and go somewhere else and they just want to go because they want to feel good and just in my personal walk I can't speak for everyone else it doesn't always feel good there you know if you do something wrong you know there's conviction that comes along with it and it's not always the warm fuzzy and to understand God you know yes he loves you he loves everybody but he can still hate what you're doing mm -hmm. and it cannot be pleasing. And I think sometimes we forget, we take God's grace, you know, for granted and think, well, you know, I'm still doing X, Y, Z and he's still blessing. Yes. You know, he reigns on the just and the unjust, but I think at some point it does, I don't want to say taint, but it can impact um, the message or mm -hmm. the anointing. It's so good. There's right. something that can be interrupted because if you're not doing everything you're supposed to do, then in that transmission, the translation, the message gets lost in translation because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. We're not being accountable. We're not we're not walking. And I guess we make mistakes. We fall, but it's like you fall. But are you gonna stay here? Or are you gonna beat yourself up over it? Or are you gonna pick up and move forward? And what's the saying? No better, do better. So where, where do you think we are right now within that message, um, particularly with young people, because of social media, everything is in their face. Everything is like here. So how do you, through your music and your brand, are you connecting with those outside of the four walls as far as church culture? Mm -hmm. You know, I can say, honestly say, and I like to keep it real. Um, I have been there. And if you're listening to me or looking at this, recording now I've been I've been exactly everything that you just said I've done things that um I know that God wasn't pleased with I've right. done I've done things I've messed up but um one thing that God is a forgiving God but he is a God of um he he'll get you he'll get you and you can't you can't you you cannot play with God you cannot play with God there comes a time um that God say okay I've gave you enough grace I gave you enough mercy and it's time for you to stop. If you don't stop, I'm just going to take everything that I put on the inside of you. I'm going to forfeit your destiny. So um, I just really think that um, if you're, like I say, if you're listening to me, if you're looking at me, look at me. I want you to listen to, I am an artist and I'm in the public eye all the time. I've done things. I've, I've not, I'm not perfect. But you know what? God had his grace and mercy upon me. And when you fall, get back up. Get back up and try again. That's, that's the kind of God I serve. You get back up, try again. Get back up and try again. Keep on doing what you need to do. So God, you know, he, he loves you. And I can never say, I used to be the type so much, so much, they used to judge people. I used to sit back, look at her. She always going, oh, she going in the prayer line because she messed up. But, you know, once I had to realize what state she was in, I said, I never know. You, we can't judge somebody because you don't know. You don't know what a person have been through or what the turmoil they have been through in their lives. So that's the one thing that us as people of God, 
as people, we need to stop doing. We need to stop judging people. Stop quick. Take your mouth off of people. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know what people have went through. Have mercy on people. So that's why I think, did that, did, did that answer your question really good? I hope so. What's <laughs> that with your chest, sis? I heard you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I do think, um, and I think that's been one of the turnoffs for me, you know, growing up in church is the level of um, judgment. Yes. Not knowing people's situations uh -huh. um, and things in the air. And it's like, yeah. The time to really sit down and talk and talk and speak and get to know this person and build a rapport, not to be nosy or yeah. get quote unquote the tea, but to really, this is your brother or sister in Christ and really get to know them with no strings, no motive. Yeah. And I think um, you can have two people on the other east side of the room. She thinks she's all that. He thinks he's all that. And not even knowing you guys have so much more in common than you realize if you just sit down and talk. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even in business, um, a lot of the brands or uh, entrepreneurs that you may envy mm -hmm. and you're, and you're kind of like, man, you know, they're just doing this and that. And you're comparing yourself against this brand or this business, not knowing that the person running the business or the brand could be, you know, the answer to the prayer that you, you've been praying to God for, mm -hmm. but you've been so busy competing you've been competing with your blessing. Mm -hmm. The very thing that can bless you in your mind, you've been competing. And that person or that brand is not even thinking about you. Mm -hmm. They've got their own thing going on. And I think a lot of times, just we as people, we're so focused on looking at, oh, they're doing this, she's doing that, you know. When in reality, is that really why you're feeling like that? Or is that a reflection of what you should have been doing or what you could have been called to do? And then now you're feeling some type of resentment because you didn't have the discipline to do what it took to get there. Oh, that's a, lot of, a lot of times when we, we get off of that mm -hmm. and really just embrace and embody each other because I don't know what Danita is going through. Yeah, I don't know the storms and the hell you're going through and what it took for you to even get out of the bed this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, particularly with women, we do it all the time. You know, we'll see a, a, another sister come through the door and we're looking at the hair and the shoes and, mm. and it's like, yeah her face is always does she always have to be made up every time yeah. not yeah. knowing sister girl is battling depression and just to feel like she's present today she yeah. put on a, her good wig and yeah. did her face and her makeup yeah just to give her that the motivation to face herself because she's probably been in bed crying all day but how would you know that because you didn't sit down and talk to the person and it's like we need to stop tearing each other down we need to stop yeah murdering it's a spirit of murder we need to stop murdering each other in the spirit because the thing that you may need i have it and yeah. the thing that i need you may have it yes how do i know if i'm if i'm if i'm coming against you all the time and i never got to know you because yes. i'm insecure or i have low self-esteem because mm -hmm. of traumas i never dealt with within my own mind and we have to take the time to battle our own traumas our own insecurities because then you take that and you lash out on other people. And it's not that they did anything. It's because of what's really going on within yourself. Yeah. 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 That's, that's so true. You know, um, it's so funny that you said that. And that was girl, you just preached a whole message right there. That was really oh, good. I was trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, um, I've learned over the, down through the years, over the years that, you know what, people don't have a hell a heaven or a hell to put me in. Look, I've been dressed in cute since I was um, look, 14 years old, my mom used to take us to the thrift store. I would go in, she, hey, go in there and get you some. Go in there and start, I just, I've been I've been so stylish since I was a little girl. So um, this have like, I'm just giving an exa example of myself, you know, um, this, this is not nothing new that I do, but I just love fashion. When you love fashion, girl, all things fashion, I know I've seen your Instagram. <laughs> when you love all things fashion, you want to look cute. You, yeah. you, you, I, sh I love to shop. I just go and see different clothes and stuff and different, you know, different little styles and stuff. And that's what you do. You know, if you want to look fly, you want to look cute. You don't, you don't have to, it doesn't take a lot to do that. So, um, but, but, but going on to what I was saying, cause I'll lose my train of thought going on to what I was saying, people will judge you because you're dressed and cute. People will, she thinks she all that because she, every time she come in church and stuff, you know, or every time she walking up, 
she always got to, you know, put us, she always got to look cute. She always got to post a picture on Facebook or Instagram. Well, you know what? I want you to look so I can help you. Let me help you. Because if some of you are married, you know, you need to, you need to spice it up a little bit for your man. So your man won't look at other women. That's a whole, wait, do, did I, okay, did I? And then see your husband will be in my DM telling me how good I look. Am I preaching to somebody? Am I? Okay. 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 But that's, see, that's a whole nother subject. No, I was parched. That's why I was Okay. Oh, okay. 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 So I told you, we, we, we did say that this is going to, it's going to get a little saucy, right? This is the saucy part, but it's real. It's real. So you, you need to go home. You know, don't judge. Hey, call me. Hey, Danita, where you get that dress from? Or such and such. Where you get, girl, what kind of lipstick you wearing? Let me help. Let's help each other. Instead of you trying to bring me down, sweetie, I can help you. We, or you can help me. You know what I'm saying? It can be like that. We can help each other. So that way you won't have any problems at home. And I think it goes beyond that. I think also, too, um, if I sit down and talk to you, maybe you had an experience or yeah. a hurt. Mm -hmm. and, um. You know, we hear in the Bible here in the church um, that the enemy, he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he, whom he may devour. And a lot of times one of the biggest lies is you're by yourself mm -hmm. alone. And I think once we destroy that, yeah. it's just smoke and get that out of the way and sit down and like, hey, I'm not the only one that's experienced X, Y, Z. I'm yeah. not the only one that's experienced heartbreak or loss or the loss of a loved one or a job mm -hmm. or, or whatever it may be. And looking beyond the hair and the lipstick and getting yes. come on, come on. and sitting down and saying, hey, this is my story. This yeah. is what I went through. And yeah. you don't have to give every nitty gritty detail and mm -hmm. spill all the tea, but you can give them a couple of sips and say, hey, um, I went through this, but this is how I got through it. And yeah. You don't have to tell me all your business, but this is what I'm feeling. Yes. You can take it or leave it or whatever. But I will say, if you go down this road, this may be a consequence and if exactly. you, this is path this may be a consequence this is the road i took mm -hmm. and this is what happened to me and even though it might not have been right this is also how god got me through it exactly. so once we get past that and pull that curtain back uh -huh. and show our transparency and say i'm a real person yeah testing trials i've battled depression i've wanted to kill myself one point in time mm -hmm. in my life i didn't want to be here mm -hmm. or if you had an abortion or if you were raped or molested or you had a repossession or if you lost a job or you've been evicted or whatever your mm -hmm. story is yes and you find that other person and they're in it you can share that story mm -hmm. and share your journey but you can also share your victory and yes. I think that's what we need to do is learn how to share our victories yeah. and our stories. And I think that will also um, reveal not only because in church, we're always trying to show how quote unquote divine we are, yes. but sometimes you need to show how human you are. Come on here, walk in come on here. Not just in your divinity, but yeah. also walk in your humanity. Yeah, yeah. And you don't always have to post. I know we're, you know, like you and I, we grew up in holiness, we grew up in church. But sometimes, like the song, when God gave me the song, holding the keep holding on, um, I really wanted to talk to the person that doesn't read their Bible. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to the person that's not really praying. I wanted to talk to them so they can understand what I'm saying. Like the simple, powerful, most powerful thing is not in hashada, ba ba ba, because everybody don't know about that. Some of the most powerful things is just to tell somebody, hey, you know what, you gonna make it. God's going to do it and it's not over. Just keep holding on. That was the most, I mean, just tell somebody, they just, they don't understand all that. Everybody doesn't read their Bible like we do. So you have to go to where people are mentally. You have to go to where people are. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not up high like we are. And like, not as high as we think we are either. Exactly. I was just about to say that, but everybody, everybody's not on that level. So you have to meet people to where they are. And I really think that the ministry that God has given me, that I can get, I can put on, you know what? I can put on some jeans and you know what? God can still anoint me and take a, I can, I can get, I can wear a pair of jeans and I can wear some, 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 some stiletto heels or some boots, some thigh high boots, but God can still anoint me because you know what? I want to reach people. 
I want to reach them. We got to find different ways to reach people. It's it's not all the time in, you know, um, you know, getting on, you know, getting on social media and preaching and um having a Bible, but sometimes God wants us to do different things in reaching people. We have so many creative, we I am a creative. If if creatives, we have to create things, we have to create things to meet to reach different people. I know God has given me a, a platform that I can reach different different people and I'm not in a box. You know what I'm saying? I can go and talk to somebody that's on drugs and, you know, she's, she's probably half naked, but I can come right to where she is and I can talk to her. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we have to be open like that. We have to be. Yeah. Uh, one thing I will say, um, my time in the Navy, um, mm-hmm. being deployed, being on this side of the world, being on the other, other side of the world, uh-huh. I met so many different people yeah. from so many walks of life. And the, in the beginning, it was culture shock because, you know, growing up in church, that's all you know, pretty much all you do. Mm-hmm. Um, but just seeing how big the world is, and that showed me how big God is because there are so many different people, um, black, white, Asian, yeah. gay, straight, trans, um, people that believed in God. I met people that didn't believe in God. You know, I met super Christians. I met some people that were on the fence. I met, you know, people that openly told me they practiced witchcraft and they were a witch. Uh-huh. Um, just so many different, um, yeah. walks yeah. of life. Yeah. And then meeting all these different people, it taught me to listen, mm-hmm. you know, um, you don't, throw the bible in their face you don't here's a track you know you need to be you're going to hell and all that and just you know i would just ask like um well where are you from oh really oh well what's it like there and just having that conversation and i would just let them talk to me and i would just listen like hmm that's interesting Mm -hmm. well why do you believe that how do you you know well really you know and just having an open conversation excuse me. And, um, sometimes people want an ear. Yeah. Sometimes people just want someone to listen. Yeah. Because one thing I noticed after they started telling me where they're from, what they do, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why people just start telling me stuff. Oh, yeah. when I was a kid, um, my dad drank and he beat us or, and yeah. they just started telling me these things and I will, you know, and I'm just like, well, I'm sorry he went through that. Yeah. You know, but that opened the door to be a rapport. Mm-hmm. And then they may come back around. Well, you know, I really don't believe in God, but, but, and I never said anything to them about God or whatever, but just when you let people feel comfortable to come to you, that can open the door for so many other conversations to reach mm-hmm. people. And mm-hmm. I think the same thing with music, everything, it may not be hard old school church, you know, yeah. maybe it may be like Kurt Franklin or, Deja Padden or maybe like Kira Sheard like there's so many different lanes and ways to reach people because people are on have different needs Mm -hmm. and they're in different spaces or in their walk in life Mm -hmm. so I think when you have various artists okay you might not listen to Kira but Kirk touches you or this song didn't hit you but the Nita song hit me so either way it can come to you and you can come to them but we have to take off these walls of stigma and judgment because at one time we and still now we're not perfect we still have our issues and things we're battling and mistakes we've made and Mm -hmm. probably poor judgments you know um, choices and things that we've done so who are we to put ourselves on a pedestal or categorize well you did this but at least I didn't do that yeah it's still all wrong so who are we Cause at any moment he could take any of us and we've seen that with COVID. So it's just like, we just really have to stop um, tearing each other down. We have to stop judging each other. Mm -hmm. I feel like we have to um, extend kindness and grace to each other because you don't know the battle you're fighting or that I'm fighting when we're not online Mm -hmm. and we're not on social media and we're not in front of these cameras and on our phones. Um, And we just have to have that, um, that understanding to not just be divine quote unquote but we need yeah. first of all we need to be human yeah that's it that's what they people love they want realness they're looking for realness and so that's all they want they want people to be real with them so shifting gears Danita um 
we have we have chapters, we have journeys, paths in our life. Uh, for example, I was you know a greater Christ is still you know my church home, but there was a chapter where I felt led like. I need to move. I need to leave. Mm -hmm. I need to do something else with my life. And that's how I ended up in the Navy. And I could have gone sooner, but I was so torn back and forth. Should I stay? Should I go? Even though deep down, I knew that chapter in my life was gassing out, mm -hmm. but I could feel the shift, if that makes sense. Yes. And I knew if I stayed here, nothing was going to change. I wasn't going to grow. Something in in me was telling me hey there's more for you out here mm -hmm. but you have to trust me so let's go mm -hmm. and I was still doing this mm, I don't know but when I made up my mind and went with the shift it was like things began to open up for me yeah so can you touch on that shift when sometimes we stay longer than we should mm -hmm. and you know God has more for you and stepping out on faith and going with God to the next chapter or level in life. I know. Um, like I said, I was from I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, I love my church, um, Faith Apostolic Church. I loved it, but I knew that it was more for me there. I mean, I knew it was it was more for me outside of Faith Apostolic. I was like, man, I'm ready to go, and I just kept saying it like year after year. I was like, man, God, will you ever move me? <laughs> I just got frustrated, and then um, God um. At the time that I asked the Lord um, to move me, he did not move me. He did not move me. And I, I was I was trying to get away from that church for so many years, so long. But it, it just wasn't time because God was still grooming me in that church. It was some areas in my life that were going to be able to thicken me for what I have to face now. So he kept me there a little longer. But I will never forget this. I got like a, I had got a big check in the mail. And I was like, because I kept saying, I said, God, I just want to move. I said, if you bless me with the finances, Lord, just, just please, God, just, just, I just want to move, God. I know this is not it. This is not it, God. This is not it. And then um, I got the, I got the lump sum, and that was right there. That was it right there. When I got that lump sum, that was my ticket out of there. So um, I say that to say this: um, where you are, you might not want to be, but embrace where you are, and at the for the time because there's still still some things that God wants to groom in you before you can move to that next level, like he did me. I love that. And I think too, it's just, we don't always know, like I didn't know uh, joining the Navy where I was gonna go, um, you know, the possibility of getting deployed, of course that was there. And that's exactly what happened. Like I joined the Navy, went to boot camp, got out of boot camp in six weeks, I'm on the Eisenhower and the Eisenhower and we're getting deployed mm -hmm. and ended up, you know, in the Middle East or whatever, you know, um, an experience I would never forget. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, stepping out on faith opened doors for me to learn God outside of the four walls of church, because I think a lot of times we're so dependent on that atmosphere, which is, I think, also what the pandemic is teaching us. We've become so codependent mm -hmm. on um, the formality of church. And being away from that really taught me to really go for God on my own. Um, and just, Danita, I'm sure even with yourself that in your journeys, there have been situations where you had to really go for God on your on your own for yourself without, you know, your home church or your family and situations where it's just you and God that can challenge your faith. And that's something I had to learn as well, that the, no matter where I've been, God's always been there with me. Uh, and to learn to trust him that to he that he will provide for me and make a way and I'm pretty sure you can even say the same throughout your career moving in different um avenues being in different settings with people regardless of where you've been God has been there for you he's guided you and provided for you even mm -hmm. in those moments where we feel like man I'm just so alone it's just me but he shows up even if it's on a song a stranger giving you a smile but sometimes we have to make the effort to see God, even in the worst situations, because we want to focus so much on the negativity, the bad, and they did this to me, and this person walked away, and this happened, and this relationship fell apart. But to, it's kind of like, you know, you get a box in the mail from Amazon, and there's a lot of stuff. And you got to weed through all the bubble wrap. But once you get all the stuff out of the way, there's some treasure in there, but you kind of, sometimes you have to dig through it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we just 
like we've been losing a lot of great people um within the last year it's like you have one person gone that's trending on twitter then you look up as another one and then like we heard about you know pastor you know bishop rents allen passing away that was your godfather yes and all these the giants these ogs or icons or legends so what role did he have and what did he mean to you as far as um a role in your life oh my god he meant so much to me um i met rance at a at a service in montgomery alabama and um i will never forget i was ministering that night and so um you know after i got finished ministering i went back to sit down he said he said daughter come here so i, I went up you know to the stage again he said you have an, a, a unique anointing upon your life. And he said that God is, you're not going to be like everybody else and you're not going to sound like everybody else. And he said, don't change what, whoever you are, do not change who you are. Don't change it. So those words that he imparted to me, and he told everybody, he said, scratch out your hands and point them towards Danita. So he just grabbed me and he embraced me. And I felt like it was an impartation that he imparted in me and we embraced. I just, I cried. I never forget that night I cried. I cried my eyes off because it was it was in that moment that he taught me. He, and then from that moment, he was like, you know what? You are, you are my daughter now. You're my goddaughter. And he instilled in me. What he instilled in me was do not change what God has given me on the inside. If God made me unique, stay unique. Don't change. I love that. I, I and that's such a good point because we see now, particularly in social media, everyone is mimicking this person or that person in hopes of going viral. But just the importance of remaining true to your core, being being true to your girl, these braces, they work in me. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the orthodontist and they changed out my wire and it's yeah, I'm gonna give you a heavier wire and it's uh -huh. it's a trial, but we're gonna get through it. <laughs> But um, just how, just to be an individual and to be unique and true to who you are and um, to realize that I'm, I'm not cookie cutter. Camille is not cookie cutter. That's something I had to learn about myself long ago. Mm -hmm. I've always been a little different. Um, there's always been an extra little thing to my personality, even when other people try to stifle it or break my spirit and make me fit in this box of how they thought I should be. Um, I have even one person I remember growing up hearing, I'm going to break that spirit in you. Wow. And I remember hearing that. And um, yeah, we've got to break that spirit. And, you know, and those things I remember hearing, but now it's like, no, that's a part of who I am today. Yeah. And regardless of the people in our lives that have attempted to break our spirit, mm -hmm. we still are resilient and we are, we still have a light as, as, as much as you try to put a pillow over it or stifle it, it's there. And I think for anyone listening, um, don't let people make you feel guilty about who you are. Be an individual, um, not to say do something wild and crazy, but just to own your your, your uniqueness yeah. because that's a part of your gift and I think that's very important and, and like with you like um Bishop Allen told you like don't change and mm -hmm. you shouldn't yes he also told me I never forget he said he said you will travel he said you will travel around this country and as you can see that's that's what I've been doing awesome yeah, so really for those um tuning in if there were I would say two things, two two nuggets or uh, jewels, as we say, pieces of wisdom that you would give to the listeners or the viewers watching, what would they be? Look, keep that relationship with you and God on lock. Keep it on lock like this. Like, it doesn't matter who says what about you. It doesn't matter what you've done. Make sure that relationship with God is on lock. And, and continue to just keep being you. God only made you. He didn't make, he didn't make two Camilles. He didn't make um, two Danitas. He didn't make um, two Kiara Shears. He didn't make two Jay Mosses, but he made one you. Be you and be confident in who you are and be confident in what the Lord has given you. I love it. So for those that want to grab your music or book or connect with you, where can they do that? 
they can reach me on Facebook, um, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Danita Gibbs. I am the type of artist that will talk back to you unless you have, um, if you, if you're disrespectful in my inbox, I will not respond back to you. But if, you know, if you say something positive, then yeah, I'm, I'll reach back out to you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I was so excited about this episode and just yeah. thankful that she even accepted, you know, my inquiry to show up. So thank you so much. Um, <laughs> It's been a joy and a blessing having you. And I do hope that someone got something from this episode. Yes. I'm Camille Estick. I'm the host of the Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast where innovators and creators connect. Y'all, these braces, y'all pray for me. <laughs> but until next time, be blessed. Thank you for watching, guys. Good night. Bye-bye. All right.